and welcome back to Alice Goes Sailing. In the last episode we fitted the anchor light to the top of the mast and we also ran the wires through Marakai and out to the deck band to keep them nice and watertight. Now in this episode we're going to be fitting the field connector to the wind vane wire and we're also going to be fitting the connector to the anchor light. And hopefully they work by the end of the episode um, on the plotter and on the switches. So let's get into it. Right. We will just be in this end, cutting it to the length. We're gonna have the, the wire and the mast running down how we had it before, down the side there, and then in the, the, the join here, and maybe the, the uh, anchor light join here. Anchor light, we're gonna use um, these waterproof connectors, and then for the NEMA 2000 link for the wind sensor, you've got to use this, this bad boy here. Right, so this is the connector. Um, this is the female end, and then all we're gonna have to do is with the wire, what you should do is take about two centimeters from the end off of this black sheath, and then about five millimeters off the end of each one of these to connect it onto this. And here you have the little connector ends, all flathead screws to screw them in with. So two is negative, three is positive. Uh, this raised up one is the blue one, blue sensor wire, and the white sensor wire on number one below it. And then four is the shield. And the shield you have to heat shrink so it doesn't make contact and do all that kind of stuff. Because you want a good connection. Otherwise your sensor will be reading all weird and you don't want that. Because you actually want to know what the wind's going to be like. So, then you've got the, the casing that goes on top, and then you've got this rubber gland to waterproof it because it, it seals on around the actual wire pretty snug. And then this crushes it down and keeps it watertight. So, I'm going to get my little screwdriver set on the go, and I'm going to get my heat shrink and then heat shrink the, the shield wire and get all my ends cut to. Well, Cuts the length and strips with the stripper tool that I've got. All right, so as you can see, I've taken off about two centimeters of the shielding stuff, and it protects the the wire itself, so that when we put this stuff on, that will sit in there. That will squeeze down on the wire itself, and then this will go over. But it allows enough length to be able to. Um, connect up to the connectors whilst having this rubber seal sealed up because you don't want to be sealing on this the actual wire itself because that'd be ridiculous and you want to have enough length so you can move the wires around and actually connect them all right so now i've got these split apart to paranotive two sensor wires and then the field shield wire here and while these are all covered up, I'm going to get one of my heat shrink bits. I'm going to cut it to the right length so I don't have to trim up the end of this and, and base the rest of it off of the 5 mil off this and I can cut the rest of these because these are all the same length. Uh, one of them has to be a little bit shorter because on the actual connector uh, that sticks out more. And I think that's the blue sensor wire. So that's the only one that's got to be that little bit longer, a uh, little bit shorter I mean. So we'll get this this on, and I've got my little gas soldering iron. All right, so I just added that heat shrink bit onto that field wire, or shield wire. Um, so I'm just going to take back this uh, foil. Um, this doesn't matter too much; you can take a lot of it off. Right, if you can see, I've now stripped down the blue one to its right length. I've stripped the rest of these. Uh, the shield's ready to go. Um, if I get the actual connector, you can see if I line these up, like line up to the right length, and then where well, that tall one is, the blue one lines up there. So hopefully I'll just trim off the excess on the blue one, and then I'll be able to 
I'll probably start off with the short one because well, I assume that one's going to be the hardest one to get to after I put in the side one. So I think first will be the blue connector and then we'll just work our way around or we could do the one that's quite tight around the side and then do that one and then go around. Last one was probably the hardest because it messed up holding it all in, but none of them moved. They're all down to where all the rubber is, so they're all protected and won't touch or anything like that. So I'm going to sort out these bits so we can connect up the rest. Alright, so now that all that's connected up and uh, sorted, I can get on with sliding these over and getting it sealed, and then that one's finished. This all buttoned up, finished. Um, the wire is actually gonna well, you know, tuck around in here because um, we're gonna have the kicker fit here. Actually, get up to the boom, and then this wire will come around here. But we've got to avoid this a little bit, but it doesn't matter too much because we're never gonna put it forward. It's so gonna be pulled up, so it'll never interfere with this too much. Um, and then this will keep in line. Um, so what I'm gonna do is find with this locates on, screw it up together and I can find the length that I want it. Right, so that's connected up there as you can see and then right, I don't have that much excess ideally and you've also got to consider that I'm going to have this on it so let's have that as a, a gauge and um, you don't want it right on a bend either so I reckon Probably about there, so we can get our thing. Uh, so we'll have that much, the trim around, the drum will come out there, and it's got a bit of a straight loop, and that'll, that'll tap around in to wherever it needs to be. And then we've got a join there, and then this is easy. Right, they're both finished now, and I can just connect them like so. And then we'll screw them together. All connected. And there you go. Pretty snug in there. And then we've just got to do the anchor one, which uh, follow the path of these wires. And I get these, this connector here to run somewhere alongside it. Right, got quite late, but got this connector done up. Um, I used some um, heat shrink and um, the soldering iron and soldered the wires together and then sealed them up with some heat shrink. And then I just wrapped it in electrical tape to make it match the other one and give it a little bit more protection. But I've just got one clip here and it pulls it off. One handed, not so easy. Come on. There we go. 
So you see it's got this waterproof seal and then that just clicks in and it's got a little toggle so that's good for unplugging and then same on the other one the field connector that I can unplug so when I step the mast up and down when I stick it on the trailer I just unplug those two and I'll make like a clip up there or something and they'll be out of the way and I can have them when I'm sailing so I've got my anchor light and I've got my wind vane then I attach my kicker here and um, I have got adjustment on where the mast sits but that's about where I normally have it um but yeah I could go try the lights now and see I could try the anchor light and I could just see if the chart plot sees the um wind vane but I might wait for a windy day to try the wind vane properly because in a minute it's dead calm probably zero knots not even one up the mast you should see a little light come on boom that right. pretty good and then we've just got to set the wind vane up on the bng plotter right update on the wind sensor um got the wires hooked up down in the the Neiman backbone it, it's a terminate fitting so you actually have to have it on the end of the backbone i'll show you where the backbone is at the minute <laughs> not its final resting place but that's it there you can see the wind comes in at the end here um it's meant to be a terminating uh it's another terminator but it has to terminate on the end it's also the wind sensor runs on the uh what was it zero one eight three or something so this is an interface which adapts the sensor that does that to NUMA 2000 so i can actually run it on my chart plotter so if i come out that one's my very dirty boat which needs cleaning on the chart plotter itself um B &G system pretty cool uh definitely splashed out on this because i like the gadgets um well we go to stale steer and you can see it gives you a parent and it also a true wind. Um, there is any wind at the minute. Uh, it's literally just barely spinning, barely pointing any direction. But you can see it changed and also the boat isn't moving so it won't give you the apparent wind or anything like that. But on the water, this would be very cool and handy. Aha, we have some wind. We have some wind, briefly. 2.5 knots. Oh, it's going, it's going. I'm super happy with this install. I'm already gonna use this lots on the water and uh, it is a little bit excessive for this boat, but I do like my gadget. So thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you in the next episode as we work towards getting Merakai back on the water.